Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting of the Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Kern, State of California, to order. Uh, can I ask for a roll call, please? Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner McKibben? Present. Commissioner Rivera? Commissioner Sanders? Present. Commissioner Scribner? Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Here. Commissioner Gleason? Here. Commissioner Garola? Present. Thank you. Uh, could I get Commissioner Garola to lead us in the flag salute, please? Thank you. Okay, approval of the minutes of the December 6th meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. Commissioner Fowler. I have a quick addition where I mentioned on, I guess it's page two, objecting to uh, the Denon annexation. I would like that adjusted so my opposition is to island annexations. Thank you. Okay, I've got a motion by Commissioner McGuire. Did I get a second? I yes. Sanders. Thank you, Commissioner Sanders. Cast your vote, please. I'm casting my vote on the wrong screen. Don't put two in front of me. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Okay, it's time for public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Okay, I don't see anyone moving. Notice public hearing. We have a Greater Bakersfield Separation of Grade Number 5 Sphere of Influence Amendment. Mr. Knox. Chairman, with your permission, I'd like to combine the presentations for the Greater Bakersfield Separation grade items, uh, grade items 5A through D together and the Rosamond Community Service District item E and F together. Each item will require a separate vote. Okay. The Greater, Bakers, uh, the Greater Separation of Grade District has two annexations before you today, proceeding numbers 1655 and 1656. Both require a sphere of influence expansion the sphere expansion and annexation both required the other to pass to go into effect. The application was submitted in March of 2013. This is unusual for LAFCO, but then again, the Greater Bakersfield Separation and Grade District is unusual. It is the only special district of its kind in the state. For those here who may not be familiar with the district, its main function is to evaluate traffic safety, especially regarding railroad crossings. The district evaluates the safety of crossings, does some engineering, and looks for potential funding for projects to alleviate safety concerns, often by creating grade separations. Uh, and a grade separation is an overpass or an underpass, um, for those who don't speak road jargon. Um, the district itself does not build projects, but works with local jurisdictions to get a project up and running. For the most part, those local jurisdic jurisdictions means cities, counties, Caltrans, and railroads. These two annexation applications cover most of the city of Shafter. That's annexation number 50, uh, 1655 and east of Bakersfield along the Edison Corridor to the foothills. That's an annexation and, and proceeding number 1656. Annexation number, number five uh, is approximately 38,733 acres and has multiple land uses. 
and annexation 1656 is approximately 20,861 acres, also has multiple land uses. The district also requested the sphere of influence be enlarged to ex ex extend beyond the boundaries uh, where it currently serves. That allows them to move their boundaries of the district as well. With this annex annexation, there are several areas that must be reviewed and analyzed. When it comes to CEQA, uh, the district has put a notice of exemption that's been prepared and adopted by the district. There's been an indem indemnification agreement that's required by LAFCO to, to cover us in case of lawsuit. There is no property tax um, increase associated with this uh, application. There'll be no zone change. It's consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. When it comes to assessor's parcels, uh, there are some areas that do not conform. And for this, we look to the county assessor's office for notes on this. On 1656, the assessor says that the boundary of the proposed annexation does not conform to the tax rate areas, TRAs, in several places. This is due to inconsistencies resulting in thin gaps between TRAs and or sliver TRAs lying completely within the road right away. On, on annexation 1656, it uh, does not conform to parcel batteries in four locations, but they are excluded based on their size and use. Therefore, there is no detriment. So while there are inconsistencies, they are accounted for and uh, the county can, can, can address them and move forward. Uh, they can still do their tax like they, they want to, um, so, which is important to them. Uh, it is consistent with the general plan, transportation plans, and specific plans of the county. Uh, it has no effect on regional housing needs. There is no functional overlap with other districts. Uh, does not change any zoning. Uh, th this does not require a municipal service review. Uh, it does not seem that there is a reasonable definition of municipal service that this would, that would cover a separation of grade district. Uh, do not need to account for adequate water supply because it doesn't, that's not an issue. Uh, and does not change the essential, essential government services. So, if the fire is handled by the city or the county, that will, that will not change. If the water service is provided by one water provider, that will not change. Any services currently be, being provided in that area will continue to be provided by the service provider they have now. Annexation, annexation does not have 100% landowner consent. LAFCO sent notices to all the property owners within the uh, proposed boundaries and within 300 feet. Voters within the boundaries were also noted. At this point in which I need to point out that there is an error and make a correction in the report and recommendation that was included with your agenda. There will not be a LAFCO initiated protest hearing. As mentioned earlier, the Greater Bakersfield Separation and Grade District is different than many other districts. Uh, if LAFCO adopts a resolution of making a determination regarding the proposed annexation for separation of grade district, LAFCO's jurisdiction over the annexation process ends. This is significantly different than a typical annexation process. LAFCO does not conduct the pro protest proceeding. Instead, once LAFCO has adopted its resolution making a determination regarding annexation, any further proceedings regarding the proposed annexation must be conducted pursuant to the district's principal act, i.e. the separation of grade district act, which is within the California street and highway code. After the LAFCO hearing, uh, the Board of Supervisors is required to conduct a hearing after the clerk gives notice by newspaper publication pursuant to Government Code 6066, at which the hearing the Board shall consider any objections which may be filed against the annexation of any territory to the district. After the hearing, the Board may issue an order of annexation. So this is something we don't typically do, so I wanted to point that out. This is, this is one of the dangers of having a, di a uh, application that is now five years old. Um, I missed that <laughs> when we were going through the process of, of, uh, of doing the report and recommendation. So I want to make sure that everyone's clear that this is the process that happens with this, this um, particular application. 
Uh, the process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act and other relevant code sections has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices of publications required by law. We have received multiple phone calls requesting information about the annexation and what the district does, but no opposition. We received one conditional letter asking that the district work with, work with high speed rail to ensure there's coordination between projects. And I can assure you that there, there is. We also received letters from other special districts with support on the condition that it does not affect their property tax allocation, uh, which it does not. So the other districts were, were perfectly fine with that. So it's my recommendation to the commission that you should make separate votes on all four of these agenda items with items A and B being conditional on the approval of the other and items C and D being conditional, conditional approval on the other. There's no reason to increase the sphere without increasing the boundary nor is it possible to increase the boundary without coinciding increase in the sphere. It is the recommendation of the executive officer for the commission to approve these sphere amendments and annexations and send this to the board of supervisors for their approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone from the public wish to speak on the, uh, the, the public hearing that we just had on the greater Bakersfield separation of grade Number five or six? Come up to the mic. This is, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do believe we are talking about the same thing on number six over there by 6820 Avenida del Sol, the endowment, correct? Okay. My only issue is the safety issues. Being that I am a resident of 6820 Avenida del Sol. No. Nope. Can we get your name, please? Nadine Hill. Thank Sorry. You. And my husband is Darwin Hill. My, okay. I am an eyewitness to um, several homeless people living in the endowment. Um, my neighbor is Monica, and there has been people jumping over the fence trying to get into her house to rob her. And I have grandchildren, and my, like I said, my only, con my only concern is that there's also been people dumping extreme trash over there, or we're not couches, et cetera. But like I said, my only concern is the safety issues right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. B Knox, is there anything we as a commission can stipulate as far as the safety issues now? It would be the same even if this annexation goes through? We, we would refer that to the local jurisdiction, which would be city or, or, or county, uh, for them to address those issues. We have no jurisdiction over law enforcement or, or uh clean up and abatement issues. Okay, thank you. Any commissioners have any comments? Okay, I need a motion and a second for the Greater Bakersfield separation of grade number five, sphere of influence amendment. So move. Second. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, and I know on the minutes I neglected to say that it was a unanimous vote in favor. And again, this is a unanimous vote in favor of the Greater Bakersfield Separation Grade Number 5 Sphere of Influence Amendment. Now, we need to do it again for the Greater Bakersfield Separation of Grade Annexation Number 5. Motion, anyone? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Thank you. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. Again, it was carried unanimously. And now we have to do the greater, greater Bakersfield separation of grade number six, sphere of influence amendment. We need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. 
again, unanimous decision that it was in favor of. And the, the 1656 Greater Bakersfield separation of grade annexation number six. Again, we need a motion and a second. I move to test recommendation. Second. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Again, it was unanimous in favor of. Okay, well now we have E and F, Roseman Community Services District Municipal Services Review and the 1707 Roseman Community Services District Annexation Number 22. Mr. Knox. Thank you, Chairman. On March 27th of 2017, the Rosamond Community Service District submitted annexation number three and a municipal service review to, to Kern LAFCO. Consideration of the proposed municipal service review for the Rosamond Community Service District include determinations as required by government code section 56430. The commission is required to make determinations in six different areas. These are population and growth, uh, currently, the uh, population is around 22,000 and should be uh, over 40,000 by 2035. Another uh, determination is the location and characteristics of any disadvantaged unincorporated communities with, within or contiguous to the sphere of influence, and there are none. Present and planned capacity of public facilities, adequacy of public services, and infrastructure needs and deficiencies. The district has a plan and funding sources identified for the integration of three small water systems into, into their current water production and distribution system. And that, that is the purpose of why this annexation is going forward. Uh, the State Water Board um, has determined that some of these small water districts have a uh, pollutant problem that needs to be resolved and they could do that by blending water with uh, the community service district and meet the standard. So that's the reason that, that this project is going forward. Uh, the district ha has the financial ability to provide services, although they are limited. Uh, improvements can be funded through budget tightening, reserve funds, and grant funding. Uh, and the district has considered rate changes in the past. The staff's an opportunity of uh, uh, shared facilities, and again, that's what this project is about, is sharing facilities with those local water companies to create one system that provides clean water for everyone. Uh, the CEQA has been met by notice of exemption as prepared and adopted by the district. And as far as the annexation, uh, consideration of the proposed annexation of approximately 60.79 acres into the Rosamond Community Services District. The proposed area being annexed are located in, in multiple locations within the adjacent within and adjacent to the current district boundaries. The purpose of the annexation is to consolidate three water entities that have water quality issues. These are the First Mutual Water Company, the 60th Street Water Association, and the Lucky 18 on Rosamond LLC. Landowners have requested annexation for water service improvements to address, I'm not sure if I can get this right, hexavalent chromium thresholds ab above state standards. Uh, the district has prepared a mitigated negative decoration to meet the secret requirements. We have an indemnification agreement from the district. There is no uh, change in property tax, uh, no change in zoning. It is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. The assessor parcels do not conform in a couple places which is because of a, of a policy issue that we have here at LAFCO. Uh, commission policies include provisions not to split parcels, but there's also uh, provisions not to split roads. In this case, you're gonna have to pick one or the other. Uh, while there be no tax consequences, uh, the property owners will receive two tax bills if we, if we do the full width of the road. Um, I've included the full width of road in this proposal to give the commission an opportunity to make a decision. The commission has the ability to shrink a boundary at a hearing, but not to expand a boundary. So I need to start with the bigger area and then drop back if you guys do not want to, you guys, sorry, if the commission does not want to uh, create a, a dual tax bill for some of those property owners. Do you have? Mm -hmm. 
Hopefully on your screens you'll see that this is an area within the district. Um, we're in places, the property line goes to the center of the road and has been dedicated. In other places, um, the properties have not been developed at all and there's been no dedication of, of um, the road area. So that's the problem that we're facing with this one today. My recommendation is to go ahead and take in the full width of the road. This will be simpler for everyone as uh, maybe not today, but as we move down the road, um, as we do future annexations to this area, you'll end up with small slivers of road that become little islands and want to try to solve that as much as we possibly can. So that would be my recommendation, but you do have the ability to, to do one or the other on this. Uh, this project is consistent with general plan and regional transportation plan or specific plans. There is no functional, uh, functional overlap. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg, Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. We have received several phone calls asking for additional information, but no negative comments on this application. Annexation does not have 100% landowner consent. Therefore, the district has been notified that notice, hearing, and protest hearing will be conducted upon approval of, by the commission, which means I need to go to Rosamond to, to, to have a uh, protest hearing. That'll be fun. So it's my recommendation uh, that the, uh, the executive officer for the commission to approve the municipal services review, including all the determinations and accompanying notice of exemption. In a separate vote, I recommend approval of the district's request for annexation conditionally on the results of the protest hearing. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak regarding the Roseman Community Services District Municipal Service Review or their annexation number 22? Okay, anybody on the, Commissioner Garola. Yes, I have a few questions with regards to the uh, the roads. Um, so your, the staff's recommendation to annex uh, the entire width of the road. That way, there is going to be a split where uh, one is not part of the district and one is is part of the district. Or um, clarify me if I'm wrong. Sure. My recommendation is you take in the full width of the road, so the complete road is within the district. Okay. For those. For pieces that will be outside the district, only the road portion will be the will be in the district. But when they get a tax bill, it'll say zero on it. But they'll get two tax bills because there's no value of of that road that's tax that's a taxable value. Okay, thank you. Uh, I agree with that recommendation. Uh, right now, in the city of Arden, we're dealing with uh, one of our roads that lines between the county and the city. And, you know, we've been struggling getting funding uh, to that. And finally, thanks to, to the county for cooperating with us. Um, and also, Arvin's dealing with arsenic as well. So whatever we can do to help a community uh, mitigate the contamination and stay within the acceptable levels uh, under the state and federal government, you know, happy to support that. Thank you. And we as a staff have been talking to Kern Cog about Arvin's road situation. Uh, you have places where the city is, is responsible for um, maintenance on one half of the road and the county's on the other half. And it's very obvious uh, <laughs> who's taking care of the road and who isn't. <laughs> so I'll just leave it at that. Any other comments? Okay, then we need to uh, have a motion and a second on the Municipal Services Review. We'll make that motion. Second. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. So it was a unanimous agreement on the MSR. Okay, then we need a motion and a second on the uh, 1707 Roseman Community Services District Annexation Number 22. Make that motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Cast your vote. 
Motion approved, all ayes. Again, unanimous decision. Okay, any commission items? I think you guys put me in the center so I can exercise my neck tonight. Okay, go to number eight, general business. Approval of claims list number 1801. And this will require a vote. Motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Unanimously pay the bills. B. Confirmation of chair and appointment of vice chair. Mr. Knox. The commission has a custom of rotation of the chair and vice chair between the different categories of commission members. Part of that rotation calls for the vice chair to move up to chair and for the commission to pick a new vice chair. This will require a confirmation of Commissioner Mello as chair and appoint an appointment of a vice chair from special districts. Uh, it was pointed out to me that it's not city's turn next, that it is special <laughs> district's turn. Um, when can, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that uh, that's happened. Uh, this is not a hard policy of the commission and the commission has discretion. I have brought this to the attention of the two special district members. I don't have a particular preference or bias towards Commissioner Sanders or McKibben but that the seat currently occupied by Commissioner Standards, uh, Sanders is up for election in May. And so that would make it difficult if um, there's a potential that that seat will be filled by someone else and we'd have to re put it, do a new uh, vice chair. Uh, with that in mind, um, Commissioner McKibben has agreed to put his name in for nomination, uh, but only if C Commissioner Sanders declines. Commissioner Sanders declines and nominates Commissioner McKibben to the vice chair position. Okay. So this will take, do we have to have a second? You need a second, yes. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. Cast your vote. Is this just for the vice chair? We'd like to vote for you as well. No, I don't want you to vote for me. <laughs> That was not included in the motion. <laughs> I don't care. Yes, it can yes, be both. Please. Yes, please include the chair, <laughs> confirmation of the chair, and vote for vice chair. So I'm revising my uh, initial motion for Commissioner McKibben to be the vice chair and Commissioner Mello to serve as chair. And I'll second that. Okay. Now we can cast our vote. Motion approved, all ayes. And that was a unanimous decision in favor of. Okay, items 8C, 2016-2017, budget cycle, Kern-Lafco audit report. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the good news is I don't have a whole lot to say, and it's easy not to have a whole lot to say when you get a clean bill of health. Um, so there were no major recommendations. Uh, last year, the only recommendation was that we do deposits more often and we put together a schedule to do that. And so we take, took care of the one problem from last year. Uh, so at this point, um, my recommendation is to receive and file this report. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Okay, 8D. Insufficient petition for creation of Weldon Regional Water District. Mr. Knox? Yes. I have informed the commission in the past that we are working on the formation of a new water district. The community of Weldon has several water providers, most, mostly mutuals that provide water to the area. The state water board has determined that there are levels of arsenic in several wells above the state mandated threshold. This is not uncommon as we've already heard from City of Arvin. <laughs> um, to create a solution, the formation commission, a formation committee has been assembled. They have determined that the best fit for the community, community would be the creation of a regional water district. The creation of which starts with a petition of the property owners. 
A petition was circulated and signatures were obtained. Uh, the petition gatherers are given six months to complete the signature gathering and must turn in all signatures within 60 days of the last signature. Uh, the petition gatherers thought it was 60 days after the end of six months and missed their deadline, unfortunately. Um, your staff and legal counsel spent a considerable amount of time trying to find a legal way to accept the petitions and help this process but move forward. But the law and relevant legal opinions does not give much room for any discretion in this area. I have met with the signature gatherers and the formation com committee and they have decided to recirculate the petition and start again. Even though the petition is not valid, state law requires that it must be made public. Therefore, I bring it to you today to receive and file. And that is my recommendation. Any questions from the commissioners? Okay, we'll accept that to receive and file. Under general business E, redevelopment board special district member elections. Yes. Mr. Knox. On July 1st, 2018, the state requires more than 400 redevelopment agencies, oversight boards to consolidate into, into just one oversight board per county. When this occurs, each county's independent special district selection committee will be granted the authority to appoint one special district representative to that county's respective oversight board. The state legislature who put together this boards decided that since they want a special district member on it, that LAFCO already has a process for electing special district members, so we should be the ones that do the election. Of course, they don't give us any funding to, to do that election, but you know that's par for the course for the state legislature. Um, so we are, we are granted the authority to appoint one special district representative to the county's respective oversight board. If the independent special district selection committee if the county fails to act by July 15, 2018, the, government, the governor will make the appointment on its behalf. So if we don't elect someone, the governor will. Uh, the Independent Special Selection Committee uh, for current LAFCO has decided to use a vote by mail nomination appointment process. In December, your LAFCO staff notified each independent special district of the openings for nomination. These nominations are due Friday, January 19th, which is two days from now. Once the nomination period is ended, LAFCO will produce a ballot for each special district to vote. This will require a majority of the 84 independent special districts in Kern County to vote in order for there to be a ballot election. And that's been an issue in the past of getting those districts to, to, to get a vote and get, get a quorum. Uh, so we've reached out to the Kern County Special Districts Asso Association to do some get out the vote effort and to help with that. Uh, Currently, we have to notify all districts by certified mail, which can get a bit expensive. Uh, in addition to the ballot, there's a provision of law for special districts to vote by electronic means if they, are, if they give LAFCO written consent. When the ballot is sent, we will also be included a place for special districts to sign off on this provision. This will help save money and time in future elections. Uh, in fact, as we talked about earlier, uh, Colonel LAFCO has a special seat coming up in, in, in May. Uh, a special district seat. So I wanted you to be inform informed of that and that uh, the deadline is on Friday um, if it, for anyone who wants to be um, nominated for to be on the redevelopment board. Have we heard anything? I have one nomination currently. They may be elected. If, if we only have one, we are not required to go back and reelect one person. They automatically become, become the, 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 the nominee, yes, okay. the elected, or yes. Thank you. Anybody? Okay. Um, and F, executive officer miscellaneous items. Yes. Yes, Mr. Knox. Yes. We're almost done. Uh, First, I want to report that Rebecca Moore, our former executive officer, is, li is alive and well. Uh, some of you may have seen in the paper that there was a, uh, a notice of a Rebecca Moore, and I reached out and confirmed that that was not her. So just want to make sure that everyone's good that she's still alive. 
Uh, in addition to the special district seat that's open in May, we have several other seats uh, that will be coming open. Uh, the Arvin seat uh, will be uh, termed out. Uh, there is a city selection committee that will meet next month and select a new member. Uh, our rotation is alphabetical and presumably that would be Delano, uh, but there have been times in the past where cities have split, uh, switched spaces and, and done things like that. So it's not absolute that Delano is going to be next, but they're the next one on the list. Um, was, uh, an alternate will also be chosen from California City as they will be the, the senior um, uh, city member on this commission. Uh, and that city selection com uh, committee will meet next month and we will bring those, that, those uh, results to the next commission meeting. Uh, in addition to the city, there are two additional seats that will be open. I've already mentioned uh, this special district seat by Commissioner Sanders uh, that will re require an appointment. Uh, also, there's a public member seat that currently held by Commissioner Feller that's also at the end of the term. Um, this will require a public c a call for nominations and a meeting of the public member selection committee. The, the makeup of the committee is a bit different for each of the two public uh, members. I will review the process again in the coming weeks and make sure we have the right committee members. My reco recollection is that the city of Bakersfield is not allowed uh, to be on this committee. Um, so um, I'll make sure that I will confirm that that's, that's the case. Uh, it's interesting that they're not here today. I guess I can thank uh, Commissioner Gleason and Supervisor Gleason uh, uh, for expanding the holiday schedule for county employees. In my contract, it, it states that I receive the same holidays as the county. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I, I work during that week, by the way. Um, so I, I continue to work. And also our staff continue to work that week. Lafayette staff gets their holiday schedule from our employee handbook. The current handbook does not reference the county holiday schedule, but rather lists the dates in which the holidays are to be taken, the specific dates. They match the holiday schedule of the county until now. It was my understanding that that was the intent of the commission for staff to have the same schedule as the county. My question to the commission is whether there is interest in this issue. If, if and if so, whether this should go to the policy committee or come right back to the commission for consideration. So it's kind of an open question to you. Whether you should change the... Uh, yes, the whether I should, we should change the policy to uh, say that our holiday schedule matches the county's. Commissioner Fowler. And you're, you're not making a vote today on whether to do it or whether to bring it back or not. So I'm just asking for opinion, not a vote. Just my opinion, skip the committee meeting. That's a minor item that we can handle. Okay. I agree. The same I agree. Let's okay. bring it to the full commission. Perfect. I'll bring it back in February. Thank you. Uh, and I'll finish with, the, with uh, the next meeting, which is scheduled for Wednesday, February 28th. That's the last Wednesday in uh, February here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. And we expect to have several annexation items for your consideration. So we're staying plenty busy. So thank you. Thank you. So I will now adjourn our meeting.